Hello everyone, in this video I wanted to go over a few game ben in game benchmarks for my current AMD build. I am running an X6 1090T clocked at 3.6 gigahertz, 8 gig of RAM, Sabertooth 990FX, AM3 motherboard with an EVGA 670 NVIDIA graphics card. So really quick, we're go I'm going to, to run Skyrim the Enhanced Edition. We are currently in in a cave here, and indoors you can see it's easily getting 60 frames per second with everything maxed out in the settings, 1080p. On the other hand, once I'm outside, the frames drop considerably down to the 40s, sometimes the 30s. So here I'm just trying to get a, a view of everything. Try to just bog it down as much as possible. And I'm getting attacked by a dragon. Perfect timing. So I just cut the video just straight to the final battle here with this dragon. Still 40 frames. Dropping into the high 30s. CPU running about half. With you know, it's a six-core processor, true six-core AMD Athlon processor. That's why I, I never upgraded to the FX 8350 or the FX series because there wasn't going to be much of a jump. I was really waiting for AMD to release processor that was significantly faster than my 1090T before upgrading. So minimum 27, average 44 frames. Going to jump into The Witcher 3. I have my video settings set to medium across the board. Hairworks is turned off. I just loaded it on this machine, so this is the beginning of the game. I thought just riding the horse as fast as possible here would just really bog it down to its lowest possible frames at these settings. So in the past, my previous AMD builds, I've had the K5s, the K6s, the X2, 6400, and this was my last, this was the actual last AMD build that I put together running the 1090. So just going through these in-game benchmarks before I upgrade to the to the Ryzen processor, I'm planning on upgrading to the R to the to the Ryzen 7 1700, the lowest eight-core 16-thread processor. That way I can have a have something to compare to between the between the two. So our average was 29 in that, which is not bad for an AMT 1090T 6 core running the NVIDIA 670 graphics card. But for GTA 4, on the other hand, it runs it much better. I have this one pretty much set at medium settings. Just pretty much what it defaulted to when I loaded the game up. So if you're still running something similar to this or looking for a, a graphics car upgrade, 
it still runs modern games just just not to the to the max that most people currently are used to getting around 55 frames in the city CPU is much higher than the previous games close to to 80% CPU usage on a 6 core processor again true 6 core processor 6 meg running 6 gig of memory being used out of the 8 gig GPUs close to running around 80-90% so it did did much better in GTA 4 than Witcher. Now here is one of my favorite games, Killing Floor. I'm not a huge Battlefield fan. After Battlefield 2, I just couldn't find myself into any other. You know, I couldn't find, I couldn't get into any of the other Battlefield games. But Killing Floor was one of my favorites. So when Killing Floor 2 released. Of course, I bought it and I've been playing it quite a bit. This server is kind of laggy, so as you can see, the headshots are, are there's a hesitation there. But average, as you can see, I'm hitting 60 frames easily. Medium settings in this game also. CPU is also running 80 percent. Still not bad for the for the Athlon. X6 T90T opted for the dual wielder in killing floor. One of my favorite favorite builds here. So average 59, minimum 52. So this will include our video. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. If not, thumbs down. Please subscribe, and thanks for watching.